Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is part two of our Adobe Photoshop Elements 11 training tutorial video series. And in this episode, we're going to go over the quick and guided methods in Adobe Photoshop Elements 11 on how to process your photographs. And I'm going to warn you ahead of time, it's, I'm just going to give you an overview. Um, both of these methods are pretty intuitive, so you don't need really a lot of instruction to learn how to use them. So I'm going to just show you how you know to load your photographs in there and some of the stuff you could do. Um, in part three and in future episodes on, we're going to be into the expert section. And that's where the real power of Photoshop Elements 11 can be um, can be utilized. So look for those in future um, segments. In this episode though, as I mentioned, we're just going to do a quick uh, overview of the quick and guided. But until then, if you guys could do me a favor and subscribe to my videos on YouTube, like them, comment on them, I would really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who has done so already. I really uh, appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, let's get into it. We're going to go right into Photoshop Elements 11. And um, it comes up with the welcome screen. We're going to click on the photo editor. And we're going to open a couple photographs by clicking on the open key over here. I have a couple on my desktop. They're JPEGs. Now I always shoot camera raw, and or raw I should say. And when you take a raw file and try to load it into either Photoshop or Elements, either one, um, it doesn't open it natively, it will open it in another program called Adobe Camera Raw. And in Adobe Camera Raw you could do some modifications to the photograph and then it will send it over to either Elements 11 or to Photoshop as a TIFF file usually. Um, this, um, you know, to show you this, I, I didn't want to go into Adobe Camera Raw yet. I'm going to do that in part three. Uh, that's how you would, you know, uh, do it from start to finish uh, modifi modifying a raw file. But many of you shoot in JPEGs you know, with your camera or your camera only shoots JPEGs and that's where you would use this quick and guided method. It, it really does a good job. So I just uh, took uh, my raw files and I converted them to JPEG as is. I didn't do any modifications on them so we could do this um, tutorial. So I'm going to open both of these. I could uh, click on the first one, hit the command key while I click on the second one. I selected them both. And they'll open up um, into um, Elements 11. Now we're going to do some quick um, modifications first. We have Quick, Guided, and Expert. And as I mentioned a couple times already, parts three and on, we're going to be doing the Expert um, uh, modifications. This is like f almost like full-blown Photoshop right here. It's just watered down a little bit. Um, but right now for this lion we're going to do some quick modifications. First of all in the view I prefer to have a before and after view uh, in a horizontal orientation. Um, some people prefer only looking at the after image. Some might like it vertical. I'm not sure why anyone would want a before only because you wouldn't see what adjustments you're doing to it. But anyways, we'll go to the before and after in the horizontal orientation, even though it cuts off part, part of the lion. Um, we can hit the command minus key and it will resize the photographs. The command plus key makes them bigger, command minus smaller. So we could see more of the image. Okay, right away we're, we have six options over here. If um, Five of them do the, you know, exposure, something, something specific to the photograph. The top one, though, is a smart fix. If you're in a hurry, you just want to process these photos real quick because you're going to send them off to an email to somebody or you're going to post them on the web. Uh, you could just do the smart fix and you could, you could click auto. Or you could pick one of these previews here and, and see which one you might like the best. Um, if you click auto, it'll takes a second to render. And there it is. It, it modified the photograph. You see I made it slightly brighter. Um, it just basically did an exposure adjustment. If you don't like what it did, you could click this reset panel right here and it will reset it back to the way it was. Um, if you want to do things individually, you could jump down you know, and you could do an exposure adjustment here. Again, it's very simple. You have nine previews. You could just pick one of these previews or you could just adjust the slider until you're happy with exposure and um, when you're done just close the panel. Um, 
You can do a levels adjustment. Levels is a histogram with the blacks and shadows on the left, midtones in the middle, and the highlights and whites on the right. Um, you have three tabs. You're going to start out with the shadows. You could bring the shadows up. So basically as I move it to the right, as you see the, the shadow part of the picture is getting brighter. Um, midtones um, is anything that's considered a midtone, which is in the middle of this histogram. You could move it to the right, move it to the left, to see, seemingly get something that's pleasing to your eye. Then move to highlights, and you could bring highlights down a little bit by moving to the right, and that's pretty good for me right there. If you didn't want to mess around with that, you could hit auto levels and it would have done everything automatically as it felt it should be done. And auto contrast would have adjusted the contrast as it felt it should be done. But I like what I did, so I'm going to leave it. Now you could uh, adjust color here. If you want to make a, a monochrome image, you could just click on the first um, preview. If you want an over-the-top color image, super saturated, click over here. Um, I'm not going to do anything with saturation. Hue, if you want to change the hues of the colors, make the greens, purples, and stuff like that, you could, you know, try one of these presets or just move the slider around. I'm going to adjust vibrance a little. I, I'd like it a, the colors a little more vibrant. The difference between vibrance and saturation, I met, mentioned this many times in the Lightroom training videos I have. Um, saturation, if you increase it, will adjust, uh, increase the color intensity of every color in the photograph. Vibrance, on the other hand, as you increase it, will increase the color intensity of those colors that aren't already near saturation. So vibrance helps bring bring out some more of the subtle tones in the photograph. Um, and you, again, you could pick a preset. You can make it pretty much, you know, more monochrome or, or you know, a, a desaturated photograph, or you could really supersaturate the photograph. I am just going to add a little vibrance to it. It just gives it a little more punch. As you can see the greens now are a little more greener and his uh, fur is a little got a little more punch to it. Again you could hit auto if you want and it will do all three of these adjustments automatically which I don't uh, want to do at the moment. Uh, color balance is your temperature. If you were in a difficult lighting situation you had fluorescent lights and incandescent lights lighting a subject you could adjust the temperature and tint here uh, to do it. Um, obviously the color temperature is fine. And we could sharpen our photograph. Again, we could click a preset um, to sharpen, or we could adjust this slider um, till we get the sharpening like we want it. Or we could just click this auto uh, key and it will automatically sharpen the picture as it sees fit. And there we are. We're done already. We took this photograph and we enhanced the colors and we adjusted the brightness and the shadows and, and we made it... Uh, now I could save it and send it off in an email, or I could um, post it to the web, um, whatever I feel like you know I'd like to do with it. And that's quick. You could do it really, really, obviously, very fast. Now we're going to go over to the guided method, and we're not going to use our line. We'll use this landscape. And um, the way I switched, I just uh, went on the preview down here, and I double-clicked on it. If I wanted to go back to the line, I could double-click on the line. Um, now, as you can see over here, we have a lot of different things we could do um, to the photograph. They're in um, three separate um, categories. One is touch-ups, which is very similar to what we did in Quick, just a little more powerful and some more are, are there. Photo effects, which are things we could do to the photograph to give it a, a special photo effect. And photo play, which is just kind of crazy stuff, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, Again, we could uh, adjust the brightness and contrast. It, um, it's a guided method in that they tell you what to do, how to move the sliders. Or you could just click Auto Fix again if you'd like to. If you didn't like what Auto Fix did or you don't like what you're doing down here, just click this reset panel here and it will reset it. And then you could click Cancel to get out of it and you didn't make any adjustments whatever, whatsoever. Um, so again, I'm just going to click Auto Fix and I'm going to click Done. If there were people in this photo, you could correct skin tones that were, you know, from crazy lighting or something. Um, we could crop the photo here. You could just pull on these tabs to crop it the way you want. <clears throat> I don't want to crop this photo, but if you did, that's how you would do it. I, again, um, I'm going kind of quickly, but it tells you right here what to do. And there's um, 
different overlays you could use, a uh, rule of thirds, a grid, the golden ratio, which is one I like if you watched my um, um, my YouTube videos and the videos on my website on the Lightroom training. It explains um, a lot of these um, overlays. And you can click reset, bring it back. I'm going to hit cancel because I don't want it uh, cropped. Um, the enhanced colors I'd like to do probably, I'd like to bring saturation up a little bit just a little bit and I'm gonna bring the lightness and this will give the uh, foreground a little more pop um, I could click auto fix but I like what I did so I'm gonna click OK um, levels adjustment are very similar to what we did in the quick um, area um, it explains everything you have to do here. I'm not going to do a levels adjustment now because what it does, it creates another layer. And we're going to talk about layers in the expert section when we get to that. But you could do this. It'll pay, it will step you right through and what you got to do. So it's not difficult at all. That's why it's guided. Um, we are going to lighten and darken, I think, the photograph. I want my shadows. There's a lot of more detail in here I could tease out. So I'm going to bring the shadows up a little bit. and maybe down a little bit, maybe brought them a little too high. Um, the highlights you could bring down when moving to the right. And the midtones I think are fine, but you could move them and make them, you know, less contrast, more contrast. It's kind of more, it, to me it's adding contrast when you adjust the midtone adjustment. I'm going to click done. Um, you could recompose the shot. Um, what this does is kind of bizarre is um, in a landscape it's not going to do anything that's that we'd want to do it actually moves pixels so I could scrunch everything in I could stretch everything out um, for instance if you had a photograph and somebody's legs look too long you could actually shorten their legs um, with this um, but on, in this landscape photo, I'm not going to do anything. Again, it gives you all the details of what you got to do and how you could, if you want to scrunch things in, but you want to protect part of the picture and not affect it, it tells you how to do it. So, uh, you, actually, you could go through here. This will help you when you get to the expert section uh, on what different controls do. It, um, it In the expert area, though, you just have a lot more control over what you're doing. You could um, again remove a color cast if this had a weird color cast in, in the photograph. Um, you could do that. Uh, if the photo was crooked I could rotate and straighten it. Again you click on any of these it tells you exactly what I what you have to do. That's why this is just an overview. I actually started doing this tutorial and demonstrating each and every one but it was getting too monotonous and I knew people would have been turning this off halfway through. Um, we could sharpen this photograph. Um, you just move this sharpen thing until we like it, how sharp it is. You know, you could auto fix and it will automatically sharpen it as it sees fit. Um, now, the photo effects are different things you could do um, to enhance the photograph. Again, it shows you um, and explains to you what you want to do. In this depth of field, if there was a person right here, let's say. I could make them in focus and make everything drop out of focus and that's what they're kind of showing you here with these chess pieces and you could do it a simple way which is just one step or custom where you're actually defining what's in focus and, and what's not in focus. Um, again you could go through these um, high key shots, you're familiar with those, that's a high key black and white shot, that's the original shot. You could do it in black and white just click that button it did it automatically I could do it in color if I wanted to I don't like high key look um, you could add a diffuse glow let's try that for the heck of it go in black and white add a diffuse glow um, yeah that's horrible but anyways on this is more for portraits obviously not for a landscape um, you could do line drawings which a lot of people like um, it's probably gonna look horrible on this shot but you could um, do the pencil sketch effect they call it it takes a while to render and as you could see here, now I could adjust the layer opacity. This is, um, you're going to learn more about layers in part three of this, uh, this training tutorial series. Um, but you could adjust levels too. Um, I don't like, obviously, this effect. I'm not going to 
do anything there. But you could go through these one by one. The Orton effects uh, uh, thing for portraits, as you could see, it's kind of a blur and a glow added to the photograph. Um, there was a photographer named Orton who created this effect some years ago. Um, again, go through tilt shift. We'll straighten buildings. Uh, vignette. If you want to add a vignette, I want to add a black vignette to this photograph. I want the intensity down. Not that low. And I want to refine the shape. I want feather really very high. And then I could make it a little more intense. And that's done. So I like that vignette I put on there. Now these uh, photo play here are just crazy things you could do. You could just click on one and see. See how this um, photograph of this kid is kicking a, kicking a ball probably. But the uh, frame is, his foot is outside the frame of the photograph. So it, te again, tells you step by step how you could do all these things. Um, a picture stack is uh, when you have a number of photographs and you could stack them on top of each other like that. Or you have this one photograph and it divides it up into uh, multiple pictures. Um, you could just click on one and try it. It takes a while to render, obviously, because it has to um, make copies of each one and of each section where we want. And there, that took this photograph and made it into this picture stack, they called it. Um, you could change the borders, you could ch change how many pictures it is. Um, I picked eight pictures. Um, you could pick the gradient. Um, not really sure what that's going to do. Let's see, I never did this, so. Um, I think I have to. No, I don't know. I'm not sure what that does to the honest God truth. red so I could see it. Oh, I see. This is the background. I didn't even notice that. So that's what's behind the po the pictures. Um, we'll cancel out of that. Um, pop art is just some bizarre, I'm sure, you know, 70s type effects you could do, um, you know, to the image. Choose a thing. Wow, it's kind of crazy. Add a color. We could duplicate the image, see what it does. So this is a lot of crazy stuff you could do that probably a lot of iPhone apps do to iPhone uh, photographs that you could do here. And you could add a reflection. See how that candle now has a reflection under it? There's nothing in this photograph that would um, that, that could render properly. But I know this is just a quick, quick overview. But as I mentioned, I started doing this tutorial and I went, I had um, eight photographs down here and I was going over each and every one of these of what they did and how they did it. And it was just so boring and monotonous, you guys would have been spitting spitballs at me. So, I just wanted to give you an overview of the quick and guided methods. Now, in part three, we're going to get into this expert method. And this looks more like full-blown Photoshop. You have your tools over here, and there's all different types of things we could do uh, to the photographs. And we're going to learn about layers and blending modes and opacity and and you know, uh, clipping masks and masks. It's going to be a lot of fun. And it's not going to be just in part three, actually. This is going to probably cover uh, the next 10 parts uh, is the expert mode. And I'm going to give it to you in bite-sized chunks so you could uh, learn as you go. So that's it for this one. Um, I really appreciate you guys sticking through if you if you lasted this long watching this uh, this tutorial. And uh, again, if you guys could subscribe to my YouTube channel and like and comment in the videos, I would really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who did already and everyone that's emailed me and talked to me and stuff. I really appreciate your comments. So until part three, take care.